Hello and welcome everybody to anubavtrainings.com. In this video series, we are discussing about how to automate your Fury applications. We are also learning the regression testing using Selenium WebDriver for SAP Fury applications all on open sources. By far in these sessions, we have discussed about automating a master detail Fury application. In this session, we will talk about randomization as well as capturing toast messages. So let's go back to our application under test. The very first thing which we need to do here is this product ID. We always need to pass a unique product ID to the system. To do that, we are going to construct the random product ID with some characters at the beginning with an hyphen and then four digit random number so that we don't have to manually change every time our data to be passed to the system. Because if you do that, next time when you try to save, the same product ID is not accepted by your backend system. So you can see I've just saved a DE1009 product. And again, if I'm trying to pass the primary key, which is product ID, fails to succeed the execution. So it's important that we randomize this number so that every time a new random number is passed and it creates your product in the system. So for that, what I'm going to do is I will, I've already found out a, a, a code snippet on the internet to generate a, a three digit random number. I'm going to use this piece of code and go back to our application and we are going to use this now. So we can come here and we can say private static void and we're going to generate maybe a random number. So the return is output as in a string generate product id and that's our method and in this we are just going to add return out a product id so let me just create a string product id is equals to bank right now you can say return this product id out and now we just generate this code with an integer value and maybe I want to generate it up to four characters. So this kind of a loop which we have internally, we're going to append another loop and can say L. And we can say here, this L is not equals to I. So this is the code we have done here. Now we're going to concatenate I, J, K, and L. And maybe we can randomize up to six between one to six. I, J, K, and L, we're going to concatenate and return it out of this for loop. So let's create a number, more plus plus, and we can just concatenate i j k and l just sum it up and then produce this number out here so let's do that in another variable just a number just some i plus j z l and store this value in another variable let's say number and we can just declare this number on the top And we can concatenate this number with this random product ID and just say on about trainings EDS. And we're going to concatenate this with number dot two string. All right. So this produces a random number out. In fact, we don't need this guy. We can say bye bye. So this concatenation will return a product ID with concatenated number. And this product ID then we can use to fill our form here. Just call this, it will return you the generated product ID every time. Now first, let's quickly test this logic and run this and also check the toast message identifier, basically to build the X path to read the toast message from the screen. 
So now I execute this and you can see it has generated this random number here and it is saving and you see this toast message. Let's inspect this toast message immediately in the DOM to find out what exactly is the element type of this is. And you can see in the DOM, we can already find the property of this toast message. Remember the toast messages, they will stay on the screen for a very short period of time. So just keep an eye. You can see on the right side, the highlighted element is a div element with this message class as message toast. Yeah, we're going to copy this. Yeah, and now we can go back and write our method and hence our logic to be able to now get um, or, or detect this toast message. So that's what I'm going to do. So I can say capture toast message. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this on the, on the console. So I'm going to say system.out.println in Java. And we're going to print this toast message on the screen. So let's use this capture toast message function now. Private static. I'm going to return a string out as capture toast message. Okay, so we are going to wait for the toast message to be to be available and then we're going to use it. So this will again expect a web driver instance. We need it for doing anything. And we pass it from there. That's a very important step over here. So let's return the string out. So we're going to return right now blank string to just avoid this error here. And now what we're going to do is first, as you already know, the identifier was SAP and message toast. I can show you again. Just create another one and look at the DOM. Just capture and you can see SAP M message toast. That's the one SAP M message toast. And we can come back here. This is going to be our class name to identify it was a div element. So we will first wait for this message to let me make it maximize. And we will say that I'm going to wait for this control. So wait for control. And driver instance, the tag name is, is a div tag. The property I'm passing is an xpath. And my xpath value, which I'm passing, is slash slash div element. Uh, just compare and check for the div element, which contains a class as SAP M toast message. So please wait for a toast message to be appearing on the screen. And that's my logic and is exact is false. Now, once this is there, I'm going to capture what is written inside. Very easy. Once again, going to use this identifier. Moment the element is visible on the screen, we're going to say driver dot find element by xpath and we're going to pass our xpath expression as above and i'm going to say get me an attribute of this and the attribute name is inner text attribute that is going to return me a string out and that's exactly the string we're going to return out of our function over here superb so that's how i'm going to capture the toast message and this will be printed on the on the console. Let's go ahead and execute now and keep an eye once again uh, on the execution and keep an eye, of course, on the console. It is going to print exactly the same toast message on the on the console, which it will capture. So it launches the application under test now. Clicks on the add button, generating a random number. And now it's click on the save button. This was already generated number. So you see an error has come. Hence, it cannot capture the toast message. So maybe I'm going to go back and maybe enhance quickly our logic to um, generate maybe a bigger number. Yeah, just IJKL. And I can say multiply this with or edit with 100 
generate a three digit number every time. And let's give it a try now. Execute one more time. Closing the existing one. It will launch once again. Clicks on the plus button. And now you see it's a random number. Clicks on save. Toast message comes up on the UI. And hopefully this should have got captured. We can go back to our Java console. And voila, the product has been created in SAP S4 on our system now. This is your Toast message capturing. Yeah. So that's how you can always capture your Toast messages, which are appearing in a Fury application. They are very important to basically do a check, cross check if the required conditions or test conditions have met or not. So with that, it's a wrap on today's session. Hope you enjoyed this session. You can find the complete source code of this session into the description of the video. Please feel free to share, like, and subscribe this channel. With that, Anubo signing out, and I will see you in the next session.